Hey, Bert Salazar here. Uh, last week, uh, my team and I completed our 2020 business plan. You know, as a business owner, it's something that I do every single year, not only with myself and my family, but also our team uh, here at Gables and Cambridge. And by doing so, we also went back and took a look at what we had done uh, with our clients in 2019. Uh, so we go by specific products, a specific type of planning, whether it's accounting, whether it's financial services, whether it's um, uh, tactical retirement blueprints or retirement strategies, whatever it may be, or a combination of all. But one of the interesting things, and this is something that we do every, every year, is that we specialize in life insurance auditing. And you would wonder what life insurance auditing is, but it's, it is extremely important because the life insurance industry is changing just about every single day. So we went back to 2019. I took a look at all the business that we had done and specifically all the audits that we had done in 2019. So I jotted down some notes and I just want to share this with you because I think this is going to be very important for each and every one of you uh, for uh, 2020 and beyond. Uh, we actually conducted uh, 84 life insurance audits, uh, which on the average in the, over the last five years, We've been averaging anywhere between 75 and 115 audits per year. So we did 84 audits of life insurance contracts. These are contracts that our clients or new clients who are coming in to see us for the first time, you know, have purchased at some point in time in the past. So what was interesting is out of the 84 audits that we conducted, 70% uh, of them or 62 life insurance contracts we found out that these policies were going to lapse and the probability of lapsing was very, very, very high compared to the market. Uh, what that basically means is that these policies that were purchased anywhere between seven and 12 years ago were actually going to die before the clients did. So why would you want to have a life insurance contract that is going to die before you do? And what's most important each and every one of the clients that we communicated this to, that we ran the enforced illustrations uh, on each and every one of those contracts, were not aware by any definition that these policies were going to die before they did. And by the way, some of these clients uh, have existing financial advisors and insurance people that are helping them. The challenge is that the vast majority of these insurance advisors, you know, they get and they meet with you and they basically sell you a contract and then they don't talk to you about that contract for the rest of your life because it is what it is. So one of the things that we do very good in our firm is to go back and kind of fix and repair all the mess that everybody else has done. So um, in, in those contracts, not only did we find that 70% of them or 62 of them were going to die, actually the vast majority of them were going to die within a four-year period. So clients basically only had four years before all of a sudden they would receive a letter from the insurance carrier stating, hey, Mr. Jones or Mrs. Jones, you know, if you were paying $5,000 for this insurance contract commencing on such and such a date, your policy premium is going to go to 12000 And if you don't pay the additional money, then obviously your contract is going to lapse on a given date. Uh, so obviously that's something that, that we have done very well in 2019. We were able to repair the vast majority of them, not all of them, because some of the clients had some medical issues that they, didn't, they did not have when they first purchased a policy. So now we are repairing them by putting more and more premium into those existing contracts. Other clients just decided to cancel their contracts overall. Uh, some of the other issues that we encounter, encounter when doing these life insurance audits uh, beneficiary designations, many of them, beneficiary de designations were totally wrong. Uh, either they were in the name of the wrong person, name of the wrong company. Uh, some of the beneficiaries uh, were no longer uh, alive. Uh, and all of a sudden, there were still beneficiaries on contracts. Uh, in a couple of cases, we found that a previous spouse was still the beneficiary to an existing contract and the client didn't want that to happen. Uh, uh, the other thing that we noticed is that uh, in about five of the contracts that we reviewed, we needed to make a change to the ownership of the contract because it was not properly designed. Uh, and most important, many of these contracts 
uh, did not have any of the chronic illness riders, the critical illness. Uh, they did have the terminal illness riders, but they did not have those two long-term care riders that are so critical nowadays for the vast majority of Americans that are very, very uh, concerned about the risk of um, having a disability in retirement that the new policies have. Now, obviously the challenge with some of those contracts is that they have been around for a number of years. So those uh, hybrid policies were not aware then, were not available then. So therefore, these clients have opted out for, you know, repairing those contracts and finding uh, new contracts that would provide uh, those additional uh, long-term care riders that were not available before. Uh, one major point before I leave you is that as of November 1st of 2019, all insurance companies now have to sell life insurance contracts under the new CSL rates that were passed in 2017. Now the new rates are now uh, the, 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 the cost per thousand on a life insurance contract it is cheaper now, it is lower now than it was uh, in the last several years. And the reason for that is that every so often, the commissioner's standard ordinary office, which is the CSO company that runs insurance uh, ratings throughout the United States, uh, they go back and take a look at mortality rates uh, over the last 15, 20 years. The last one that we had was at 2001 rates. So now we're now insurance companies have to start using the 2017 rates, which would actually reduce the cost of insurance per thousand. Now you may be older, so the premium may be a little bit higher, but you can offset that because of the fact that now the per thousand cost is cheaper many a times, anywhere between 25 to 35% cheaper than it was before. So if you have a life insurance contract and you have not done an audit of that contract in the last two to three years, then I encourage each and every one of you to do so. If you don't have anyone that can do a life insurance audit for you, please feel free to reach out to me. I can do, myself and my team can do that at no cost or obligation to you. Uh, you can reach out to me at area code 786-766-1042. You can also send me an email at bert, B-E-R-T, at gablestaxgroup.com. And always remember that my goal for each and every one of you is to kind of change in the way that you see things, because when you change in the way that you see things, the things that you see change. So again, thanks for giving me a few minutes of your time, and we'll talk soon. Take care. Bye-bye.